Every time I eat this banana, I think about how this could be my last one. Because the banana is going extinct. And it has everything to do with biodiversity loss. And I want to tell you today about biodiversity loss because it is this urgent. And it is way closer to your life than you might think. Biodiversity works like a chain reaction. Just like your body functions because all of your organs are different, but they need each other and they strengthen each other so to you maintain your health until you take one away. If you deprive your body or if you neglect it, slowly your bodily functions will stop. And that's exactly what we are doing to the planet. For the past two years, I worked as the youth representative on biodiversity and food for the United Nations. And here I saw what biodiversity does all around the globe. So here I am to tell you how biodiversity is linked to one part of your life your food. And here's the story that hopefully will make you think that biodiversity is not only losing your favorite animal species, but your favorite foods or the medicines you and your relatives might need one day. And it starts with this one, the Cavendish. Its name is like some apples are called Yonegolds or some dogs are called Huskies. But unlike apples, there's only one banana to choose from in the supermarket. And that's weird. But what's also weird is that 70 years ago, this was exactly the same, but then with a different banana. That one was called the Gros Michel, or Big Mike. And as its name suggests, the fruit were bigger, but they were also sweeter, and they were easier for transport. And if you have ever wondered why the artificial flavor of banana, for instance, in ice creams or candies, tastes nothing like bananas, it's because it's based on Gros Michel. It was that of a different banana. But the only reason we are not eating the Gros Michel, seemingly better Gros Michel anymore, is because that one is already extinct. And the Cavendish is facing the same direction. But to understand what is happening to our beloved bananas, we need to look at how they grow. Because you might have noticed that bananas is one of the few fruits who do not have any seeds. But they used to. They had a lot of seeds. So the discovery of the seedless banana was huge. People went wild for it. And growers from all over the world took that plant and took it all over their own countries. And but um, but a fruit without any seed, how do you grow it? Well, you clone it. You take a piece of the plant and you put it in the soil and an identical tree arises. So every tree whether it's coming from Guatemala, Colombia, or China, growing bananas is genetically identical. Every banana you eat is the same. And we went wild for them. So to keep up with the growing demands of our banana needs, growers had to be efficient. They had to make maintenance as low as possible and harvest easy. And they did this by growing one big field of just one banana. And we call it a monoculture. And while it is efficient, the downside is, is that no other thing wants to live over here. No animal, no plant, no weeds, no insects. And why is this a downfall, you might say? Because a monoculture is the example of the absence of biodiversity. And you need biodiversity. Look at your body again. You need all your organs to be different, to function. The same for food production. You need it to be resilient against sudden changes, such as floods, climate change, or diseases. And that's the thing what's happening. Right now, Imagine 
you are all a field of bananas. You're a banana plantation. What would happen if I would infect you in the corner with a disease? How long would it take you before you in the end would be infected? Standing this closely together to your neighbor, that awkward? Probably not that long. But let's make it even worse. Because remember that you were all genetically identical. So you have the same ability or inability to fight the disease. And that's what's happening. It is as if you are right now all patients of COPD, elderly patients, at the start of COVID, stuck in this room with a weak immune system. You would not stand a chance. And it was a disease that caused the end of Gros Michel. It caused the Panama, and it feasted its way through monocultures all around the globe, and it could spread through the soil because all of the plants were vulnerable and there was nothing there to stop them. And even when growers left their fields to make a new plantation, the Panama disease kept following them, and growers had to accept it. It was the end of Gros Michel. Until they found the Cavendish. And this banana was smaller, less sweet, and a little bit harder for transport, but it did save our banana. Until now. This is the new disease, and it is roaming all around the globe. And now not only growers, but also scientists have sounded the alarm. This might be the end of our banana. Damn. No more banana breads? Or quick pre-workout snacks? Well, not yet. So let's talk solutions. Right now, the only real saving angel of our Cavendish is spraying tons of liters of chemical pesticides from a plane on the plantation. You can guess how detrimental that is for the environment. And moreover, it is polluting our groundwater and killing the microorganisms in the soil that provide the nutrients for the banana and the nutrients for us. And it gets worse, because the disease is slowly getting resistant to the chemicals. This means we need to spray more and more and more until the field is like a desert and nothing is growing on there anymore. Is that the end of the banana? When I first heard this story, I thought, can't we just find a new one? Or make one, because we're inventive, right? Yeah, we could. Because did you know there are 1,500 different kinds of bananas on the planet? So why are we not eating them? Well, first of all, it's because we are attached to this one. We love it. Second of all, as I said, not all bananas are good for long-distance transport. But thirdly, and most importantly, because we think monocultures are just easy and efficient. So even if we would able to find a banana that we like, that is good for transport, then we would still need those monocultures and we'll still keep facing the same issues we're facing today. And if all along this story you have been thinking, Avi, I'm sorry, I don't really care about bananas. What about chocolate? Because cacao trees are struggling. They're struggling with drought in Africa, and 80% of the cacao we are eating is this one variant grown over there. And who knows what these berries are on the right? Coffee. Same issues. If we keep continuing food production like this, we are creating a world without bananas, coffee, or chocolate, and who knows what more. The banana is just the tip of the iceberg, but it is a melting one. But there is a way out in food production, and that is using biodiversity. For instance, by using the genetic diversity within or between crops to create a resilient food system. You are bananas, again. But now, every other row is a different type of banana. If we have a field like this, the following two things would happen. One, 
the disease wouldn't spread as easy because now you have different immune systems. And secondly, if you are genetically different, what would be the chance that some of you would be able to handle climate change or droughts or floodings? We call a field like you are now intercropping. And it's already been done by some farmers. And you know what's the cool thing? Is that it can even increase your harvest. So more fruits and vegetables with less chemical pesticides, less polluted groundwaters and more nutrients in the soil. That's food security. And I understand this is a huge task for the farmers. But we can help them. If we open up to eating other flavors of bananas or even other colors, this is possible. But only when supermarkets, food producers, governments and financial institutions accept that we need to change the way we produce our food and financing it, there is a way out. We could save the banana. When I had been telling this story, I have had such an amazing conversations about biodiversity because people really do care about the planet. They don't feel connected to it yet. How about you now? So let the next time you prepare your meal be a reminder to biodiversity. And the next time you enter a supermarket and there is this second or third banana, let it illustrate the beginning of a new era. The era of biodiversity and a new beginning for our banana.